So the props we'll leave tonight for this yin and nidra class are two objects that are the same that you can support yourself with. So either two blocks, two towels folded. Perhaps you have two pillows that are the same size. And then you'll also want at least one bed pillow or bolster. And you might want an extra little pillow for your neck later. So go ahead and have all those handy. And then join me to find a comfortable seat. And as you make your way to find a comfortable seat, you might need to move a little flesh up from the side, from the sides, and find your sits bones underneath you. And then you can rock a little forward, a little back, a little side to side, and just find a comfortable place where you can let the bones stack. So the place of least effort. And just start to arrive here on the mat. Take a few deep breaths in. And just allow gravity to bring you a little closer to earth. Tonight's theme is surrender. So we work a lot with surrendering in the imposes, and tonight we're going to really um, just keep that theme throughout. So wherever you are, whatever side of the globe you're on, arrive to your mat. And we'll open class with the sound of Aum. You can join me if you wish, or you can just allow the vibrations to roll through you. First, go ahead and exhale all the air. Let go of anything else that's happened today. And then take a nice big full breath in through the nose. And then another breath out the mouth. Just a big sigh, release. On your next inhale, allow the hands to float up overhead. Draw the palms together. Take a full body stretch. And then on an exhale, draw the hands back to the heart center. All made together on the next exhalation. Ah. Release the hands to the thighs and the knees. You can bring the palm side up, index and thumb together. And we're just gonna settle in here with the breath. With each inhalation, feeling the spaciousness in the body, on each exhalation, just allowing gravity to bring the legs a little closer to the mat, to bring the shoulders away from the ears. Feeling that spaciousness on the inhale and then moving into that space on the exhalation. Take a few more big deep breaths like that, just settling in. I'm gonna guide you this evening through some yin poses, and then a yoga nidra, which is a guided yoga sleep, a guided yoga relaxation, in which we try to allow ourselves to fully relax the physical body while still mentally staying a little alert, not fully falling asleep. It's called the hypnagogic state. So the more that you can start to allow yourself to arrive on the mat, exhale out your day, 
the more easily you'll be able to settle into that full relaxation. Take another full breath in and a full breath out. And then you can release the thumb and the index finger, bring the palms on top of the knees. We're just gonna roll out a little bit here, taking the body in a big circle over the hips. Noticing if the circle is round, if it has a little bit of a flat tire, a little bit of an edge to it. See so if you can stay there and lean into that edge. So at your own pace, nice and slow, moving in a circle. Making sure you can pause, take it the other direction when you need. And then gently and slowly make your way back to the center. And let's let that stress of the day from the shoulders go. Go ahead and draw the shoulders up to the ears, squeeze everything out, and then draw the shoulder blades back. And on the exhale, just release them down to the side. So at your own pace, as you need, squeeze, Squeeze and then let it go. Take a few more. Excellent. We're gonna come into Malasana, into a squat. And you're gonna want a block or perhaps both your towels at this point. You're gonna want something a little bit firm. So we'll come into Malasana. We'll have wide leg malasana here, not closed leg. And you can bring a block underneath you, or perhaps you want to sit up a little bit taller. So go ahead and bring whatever you need underneath you. We'll open the feet wide. We want the soles of the feet on the mat. So wherever you're at, just allow yourself to find the most comfortable way here. So don't feel that you have to draw everything in too much. Let the soles of the feet be on the mat. And then we'll bring the elbows inside the thighs and you can adjust your feet as needed as you bring the hands together and pray. So if you have any wrist issues, you can get this same tensegrity. So I'm pressing into the thighs until I can bring the hands together to create this little unit of tensegrity, this tension that's sort of holding the shape. So hands can be in prayer. That's the most common way. But also, if you have any issues in your wrist, you can bring one hand inside the palm or perhaps two fists together. Once you find the shape, just go ahead and start lifting the heart as you open up the legs. And then go back to your breath. In yin class, we hold the poses for an extended amount of time to really get into that connective tissue. So you want to settle into a place that you can fully relax. So if you feel that you're all the way onto your edge, come off the edge a little bit. And then the body will relax so you can move through the edge. And here you're welcome to close the eyes off. And as you keep lifting the heart, you might find that the hands can come a little bit closer, the thighs, the hips can open a little bit wider.
I'm going to find about 10 more breaths here. So with each exhalation, see if you can just draw the shoulder blades together a little bit more in the back, perhaps opening the heart a little bit more. Extending the inhalations, feeling that spaciousness, and directing the breath to anywhere you feel tension. And see if you can let these last few breaths be even a little bit longer. A little bit juicier. Go ahead and find one more breath here. On your next exhalation, you can release the hands from the thighs, bring the hands down to the floor, and we're going to move into a tabletop here. So you can come off the block, knees will be under hips, hands will be under shoulders. Now here's where you're going to want to start having your two items that are the same. So either your two stack towels or your two yoga blocks. And we'll bring those under the hands. And once again, you are welcome to take fists onto these towels, or you can have your palms on. So whether or not you're using blocks or towels, it doesn't really matter. You just want a little support to open the shoulders. And we're gonna start taking just any movement that feels good. So you might wanna just look towards one foot, and then the other swaying from side to side. Taking a few cat and cow here, making your way to center. And you might even like to churn here. So Explore all of those different ways of moving here. So you have your churning, that's like a washing machine, sort of a combination of the sway and the cat and cow. You can sway from side to side. Just seeing where the edges are. Moving into anywhere that you feel tension. And then gently find your way back to center. And we're gonna extend the right leg long, tuck the toes and just press into the ball of the right foot. Again, finding where the tension is by just Taking a little movement there. Swaying and working into anything that feels sticky. And then find your way back to center and then just really pressing into the ball of the foot, opening up the leg and the foot, the sole of the foot. See if you can find just five more breaths here. Remember any time you are welcome to move and make small adjustments. So even though we're pressing directly into the foot, if you find you need to press into one hip or the other, go ahead and 
Take that movement that the body wants to take to unwind. And then making your way back to center, we're gonna take that right leg up around the outside of the right foot. So you find yourself in a little, um, a low lunge or a dragon lunge. Now you can keep your, keep your props handy here. You can bring your hands down and once again, Find a little movement. So the right foot is outside of the right hand. And if it's available to you, you can bring the forearms down onto your blocks or your towels. So start with the left forearm. Perhaps you can bring the right forearm as well. And once again, before we settle in here, take a little movement. Perhaps you need to walk the right foot out a little more to the right to find ease. Perhaps it feels better to have the sole of the right foot open so that you're just on the blade of the right foot. Go ahead and find your dragon lunge here. Remember that at any time you can move and adjust. See if you can find a juicy spot that's ready to unwind that you can settle into for some breath. And then just settle in here. Working with surrendering, we're really starting with the foundation here, opening up the pelvis through our malasana and through our dragon lunge. The head can stay in line with the neck, or perhaps you want to relax the head down a little bit. I think whichever way of holding the head is the least effort. And breathe into any tension. Perhaps you feel some tension on the left inner groin. Just direct your breath down into that space. And then if it's available to you, and if it feels good, you can open the right arm towards the rest, right thigh and just press into that thigh and we'll open up for a little twist here. So the left arm is still on the block of the towel and just pressing in and spiraling around toward the right. Again, taking any micro movements of adjustment Having a play here, see what you could open up, perhaps pressing into the right thigh, perhaps still staying with both forearms onto the mat. Go ahead and see if wherever you're at, if you can find five to seven more breaths here. And if you've spiraled around towards the right leg, go ahead and release the hand back down. If the sole of the foot is not on the floor, bring the sole of the right foot to the floor. And then we're going to press ourselves up, extend through the right leg. 
And then draw the heart towards the knee. So you can walk the hands out on either side of the right leg. And again, see if you can extend the crown towards the foot first, but you're, you can allow yourself this ease of releasing the head and neck if that feels good, if that feels more easeful. Breathing and directing the breath into any tension. And then just surrendering. Taking micro movements along the way as things start to release. Go ahead and see if you can find five to seven more breaths here. And then you can walk the sole of the right foot back onto the mat. Bring the hands back under the shoulders, stepping back into your tabletop. Taking a moment here in symmetry to notice how the two sides of the body feel different. Taking any movement you need to, and then go ahead and extend the left leg out, ball of the left foot on the mat, pressing into the ball of the left foot, moving through this as you wish, moving the hips side to side or taking any little micro movements. And then just pressing into the ball of the foot and really staying active, pressing so you're keeping the shoulders coming up over the wrists. And see if you can find some stillness here just for five to seven breaths. And then when you feel ready, we're going to draw that left leg up outside the left hand. Take some movement here so you can find your edge. And then when you feel ready, find your dragon lunge. So perhaps starting with just the right arm down on your towel or block. Perhaps the left and right arms come down. Perhaps you want to walk the foot out. Perhaps you want to open the foot up. Wherever your dragon is today, just be there with it. Adjusting and taking any micro movements along the way, and then perhaps finding a place that feels juicy that you can settle into. Directing the breath to anywhere where you feel tension. When you feel ready, you're welcome to spiral your dragon open, taking a little bit of a twist here. Drawing the left hand to the inner thigh. Perhaps just staying with your forearms on the mat or your wrists, your hands, wherever you're at. Still allowing the body to take any movement it needs to to unwind.
See if you can find five to seven more breaths. Whether or not you're spiraling open. Or staying facing the mat. And then if you have the left hand on the inner thigh, go ahead and release it. Let the foot come back onto the floor of the mat. If you turn the sole of the foot off the mat, and gently walk your hands back. And then we're going to extend the left leg long. And go ahead and extend the crown first, so lengthen the spine. Draw the heart towards the knee. And then surrender to the pose. So perhaps that is to just allow your head and neck to relax. Allowing any micro movements. Finding the edge, and then backing off the edge. Allow yourself seven more breaths here. And then gently you can walk the hands back forward, frame the foot. We'll step back into our tabletop, taking any movement again here in tabletop and just noticing how these movements feel now. So taking a little sway or a little cat and cow. Go ahead and set your props aside, and we're going to walk all the way down onto the belly. Untuck the toes, stack the hands, forearms, so that you can bring the forehead onto the wrists. Walk the legs long to make length in the spine, and then just settle in here for about five belly breaths. With each inhalation, feeling the belly against the earth, feeling that support of the earth, and then just settling like dust towards the earth, surrendering here. We're going to open up the shoulders. So go ahead and extend the left arm long along the mat alongside of you and bring the left cheek onto the mat. We're going to walk the left fingertips out as we roll onto the left side body. The right hand is going to be in front of the face. And then you can kickstand the right leg. And it's also quite nice to bring one of your props underneath the head. Now, if you have um, really uh, hypermobility in the elbows, you can also cactus the arms. So I'm going to show from this side. You can either have the arm in cactus or long. And then you're just walking the fingertips out, rolling onto that side. So let the head be supported, kick down the leg up, and you can use your right arm to come deeper into the pose, pressing the fingertips into the mat. 
Or perhaps you want to open your right arm up. Open those wings. And then once again, just directing your breath anywhere you feel tension. Keeping the breath nice and long and deep as you surrender into the pose and let gravity do all the work. Let's see if you can find five to seven more breaths here. If you've extended the wing of the right arm, Go ahead and bring that back down in front of the face. Use that as support as you release the leg and roll back onto the belly. You can bring the hands over the shoulders and just rock the hips gently side to side. And then we'll take the same pose on the other side. So you're walking the right fingertips out as you roll onto the right side body. This time the left leg is going to be your kickstand. So you can use that to help you get deeper into the pose. You can bring a, a prop underneath your head if that feels nice to support. And then have the left hand in front of the face to start. Find where that edge is and then back off it a little bit. We're going to surrender into the edge, not press ourselves there. And then once you find somewhere juicy you can relax into, you can keep the left hand in front of the face, so you're welcome to Open up your wing. As you surrender into the pose, staying with the breath, directing the breath to anywhere you feel tension, On the inhale, creating space. On the exhale, moving into that space. See if you can find five to seven more breaths here.
And if you've spread your wings, go ahead and bring that left hand back in front of the face. Press into the left hand as needed as you release the leg. And go ahead and roll back onto your belly. Gently rocking the hips side to side. Walking the legs long on the mat. We're going to come into a sphinx pose. So you're going to just bring your elbows underneath the shoulders. Walk the legs long so that you have space in your lower back. So we don't want the lower back to feel compressed. And then you can draw your heart open by as if you're dragging your arms along the mat and pulling the mat towards you. Allow the shoulder blades to come together in the back. Allow the heart to open. And then you can stay active like this, but you can also release the pull of the arms, interlace the fingers, and then let the head come into the fingers. Just rest the head in the, in the hammock of the fingers. So whichever feels more beneficial, you can relax into either with that palms down on the mat or the fingers interlaced, releasing the weight of the head into the hand. I'm just going to be here a few more breaths. See if you can find one more full breath in and a full breath out. Just a little back bend this evening. On your next exhale, you can release the palms back to the mat. We're going to press back through our tabletop. Take some movement. Move those fluids around the body. And then we're going to come into a child's pose. So here you're going to want your bolster. Bring the knees wide. Toes together. And just allow the chest to come forward onto the bolster. Go ahead and place one cheek on the bolster so you can look to one side. I'll let you know when we're halfway through so that you can lift your head and take the rotation in the cervical spine the other direction. Settling in here and allowing the tailbone to just come closer to the heels. So the weight of the body is taking you into the pose. You're working with gravity here. So just allow yourself to have a little bit more space in the lower back. With each inhalation, feeling the spaciousness of the body, and then on the exhalation, surrendering into that space. And you're about halfway through, so you're welcome to lift the head gently, place the other cheek onto the bolster, and then just settle back in.
Noticing what happens in the body as you inhale. And then see if you can release any tension to go deeper into the pose on the exhalation. Finding about five more breaths here. And on an inhale, begin walking the hands back towards the shoulders. Draw yourself back up into a tabletop. Once again, taking any movement here and just noticing how much more open the body is. Moving into those same spaces we started with and seeing how it's changed. And we'll begin to prepare for the nidra. And you have a couple of choices of how you can take the yoga nidra. You can come into a regular shavasana. If you take shavasana, I encourage you to put a bolster under the legs so that you can have the lower back relaxed. However, if you prefer to take a Recline butterfly. You can bring the bolster to the, to the sacrum. Bring your blocks or towels under the knees or thighs and feet together. And go ahead and relax this way. So you're going to want to build a nest that's quite comfortable. You're going to be in this pose for about 18 minutes. I encourage you, if you're taking your reclined butterfly, to put something, if, depending on where your bolster is, don't let your head just hang here. But have something to support the head. So go ahead and make your way into your pose of choice, either reclined butterfly, totally supported in the legs, with the feet together, and something in the back, or corpse pose, shavasana with a bolster underneath the knees. And whichever pose you've decided to take, bring the belly, bring the hands to the belly for a moment, and just feel the breath fill the belly. Feel that movement inside of you. And then go ahead and release the hands on either side, palm side up. I'll guide you through some auto-suggestive relaxation. You can follow the sound of my voice, repeating silently to yourself as I name the parts of the body. Taking a full breath in, 
And just noticing where the body is touching the earth, touching the mat, touching the ground. I relax my right shoulder. I relax my right elbow. I relax my right wrist. I relax my right palm. I relax the base of my fingers. I relax the tips of my fingers. My right hand, my right arm, and my right shoulder are completely relaxed. I relax my left shoulder. I relax my left elbow. I relax my left wrist. I relax my left palm. I relax the base of the fingers, the tips of the fingers. My left hand, my left arm, and my left shoulder are completely relaxed. I relax my heart. I relax my chest. I relax my upper back. I relax my belly. I relax my organs. I relax my lower back. My entire torso is completely relaxed. I relax my right hip. I relax my right knee. I relax my right ankle, the sole of my right foot, the base of my toes, and the tips of my right toes. My right foot, my right leg, and my right hip are completely relaxed. I relax my left hip. I relax my left knee. I relax my left ankle. The sole of my left foot, the base of my toes, the tips of my toes, the entire left foot, left leg, and hip are relaxed.
I relax my neck. I relax my jaw. I relax my face. My neck, my jaw, my face, my entire head is relaxed. I relax the mind. The mind is relaxed. The entire body is completely relaxed. My entire body is completely relaxed. As you withdraw your mind, concentrate on that space in front of your closed eyes. In Sanskrit, this place the screen in front of the closed eyes is called the chitta kasha. Imagine before you a transparent screen through which you can see into infinite space. A space that extends as far as you can see. And as you focus on that infinite space you're gazing at, be aware of any phenomena that manifest in the body. The Chitakasha is the sky of consciousness. Rest your mind in its warm and friendly embrace. Turn your chitta kasha inward and bring that lens as a mirror. See yourself lying on the mat. See yourself lying in complete relaxation on the mat. See the skin of your body as a membrane holding all the liquid of the body intact. And then begin to zoom in to see the cells of the body. Begin to zoom in to see what is underneath that membrane of the skin. Each cell its own bag of liquid encased in its own membrane. And as you inhale, notice the space between the cells expand. Zooming into the cells, notice the space inside of the cells the liquid space inside of the cells. Keep zooming your awareness down into the cellular level of the body, down to the atomic level. See the movement in the atom as the electron spins around the nucleus. Notice this space inside of the atom. This is living space. Allow yourself to surrender into this living space.
See your body surrendering to the earth in total surrender to the earth. With each inhalation, notice how that space grows. Allow yourself to surrender into this space. As you surrender into the space, begin to become aware of the body again as a whole. Panning out to the cellular level from the atomic level. Noticing the space inside the cells. Surrendering to the space inside of the cells. Panning out, noticing the space between the cells. Surrendering to that space between the cells. Panning out. Beginning to become aware of the membrane of the skin. Noticing the space around the body. Becoming aware of where space touches the body. With each inhalation becoming more aware of the space around the body. Surrendering into the space around you. Keep lengthening each inhalation, becoming more and more aware of the body as one unit full of spaciousness, surrendering into the spaciousness. Following the sound of my voice, becoming more aware of the space around you, deepening each breath, Allowing your mind to follow these words of Rumi as each breath becomes a little deeper, a little bit more profound. Rumi writes of a zero circle. Be helpless and dumbfounded unable to say yes or no. Then a stretcher will come from grace to gather us up. We are too dull-eyed to see the beauty. If we say yes, we can, we'll be lying. If we say no, we don't see it, <clears throat> that no will behead us and shut tight our window into spirit. 
So let us not be sure of anything besides ourselves. And only that. So miraculous beings come running to help. Crazed. Lying in a zero circle, mute. We will finally be saying with tremendous eloquence, lead us. Then we've totally surrendered to that beauty. We become a mighty kindness. As you begin to make more awareness of the body and the space around you, let the mind surrender to not be sure of anything besides yourself. Keep deepening the lengths of the inhalation. Perhaps beginning to bring some movement back to the toes and the fingers. Surrendering. Surrendering to all of this beauty within you. Inhaling. Becoming more and more aware of where your body is touching the mat. Surrendering. Surrendering to all this beauty around you. When you feel ready, you can take a full body stretch, lengthening the legs if you're in butterfly, inhaling the hands up overhead if you're in Shavasana. Just begin moving into the space around you into this beauty all around you. And then go ahead and roll on to one side or the other, use the arm as a pillow, and just take a moment in fetal position. And when you feel ready, go ahead and walk yourself up to find a comfortable seat. You can keep the eyes closed or the gaze hazy, the eyelids gently open, not really focusing on anything. And just take a moment here to integrate your visualization from your Chitakasha screen, moving out into space, moving inward into space. And then just surrendering into that space, totally surrendering that beauty so that you may become a mighty kindness. We'll see a class with the sound of Aum. You can join me if you wish or you can just let the vibration move through you. If you'd like to join me, go ahead and exhale at all your air, and on the inhale, let the hands float up overhead. On the exhale, draw the palms in prayer back to heart center. All me on the next exhalation. Um. the chin towards the chest, honoring yourself for your practice and your ability to allow yourself to relax and find spaciousness, surrender into the beauty of this world, and then draw the thumbs up to eyebrows. May we all notice and remember to find this kindness, this mighty kindness. Seeing the light and the beauty, the connectedness, the oneness in all others and all beings. Namaste.